Continuing Mobile Education for Emergency Medical Services Providers. This is Evaluating the Older Adult, Episode 1, Evaluating Altered Mental Status. At the end of this episode, you should be able to identify common causes of altered mental status, learn the importance of determining baseline mental status, and learn interview strategies to assist in evaluating altered mental status. I think uh, when EMS providers evaluate older adults, um, one thing that's important to keep in mind is that um, changes in mental status should be considered um, an acute and potentially reversible event until proven otherwise. Um, so that uh, taking a systematic approach in evaluating um, older adults with mental status changes um, is critically important. Um, uh, systematically looking for things like altered blood sugar levels, altered oxygen levels uh, that may create um, acute medical emergencies um, for older adults and younger adults. Um, I think the next important piece is to look for focal neurologic findings uh, because this can uh, change your approach to that uh, patient leading you down uh, more of a neurologic um, workup um, and evaluation. Uh, and then finally, uh, being attuned to what the level of consciousness is, um, because how attentive an individual it is can also give you clues to um, whether they may have things like delirium. Some common causes of altered mental status in older adults are dementia, urinary tract infection, um, blood sugar, stroke, it can be a whole gambit of things and oftentimes it's something really bland like a urinary tract infection that causes it but we need to rule out the most severe things first. Remember that changes in mental status should be considered reversible until proven otherwise and causes may be multiple but always consider hypoxia, hypoglycemia, and infection. So distinguishing delirium and dementia is a, a very common uh, medical issue. Uh, one of the key things is remembering how um, delirium is defined. So delirium is defined as something with acute onset. Um, this is something that should be different than dementia. Dementia by definition should be a slowly uh, progressive or a chronic illness. Um, uh, delirium should occur in more of an acute fashion. Um, it should be accompanied by what they describe as a waxing and waning level of consciousness. Uh, so people may be very sleepy um, and that may oscillate to a period of being very agitated or almost um, uh, hyperstimulated. Um, you can see both types of patterns in delirium. Um, and, and then there should be some confusion um, associated with delirium. This is common also in dementia. Uh, one of the main challenges is that uh, dementia is one of the main risk factors for delirium. So often you'll see both um, at the same time. Uh, people who have a diagnosis of dementia who for whatever acute uh, illness or acute reason um, also have um, delirium. Well, I think one of the main misconceptions about uh, older adults is that confusion or uh, altered mental status states are normal. Uh, when in fact uh, people as they age really shouldn't have confusion or changes in their mental status. Uh, dementia is a very common diagnosis um, and increases as people age. So um, among those around the age of 65, dementia is seen in about 2% uh, of people. As you move up in years, 75-year-olds uh, about um, anywhere from uh, 5 to 6 percent of uh, individuals will have dementia. 85-year-olds, um, uh, it increases further to about 20 percent of 85-year-olds. And when you look at the fastest segment of the population in terms of growth, uh, those over the age of 90, about a third of individuals will have um, dementia um, or dementing illnesses. So um, it's actually the exception, uh, not the rule. Um, most people as they age uh, in a healthy fashion should maintain their ability uh, to think clearly uh, and maintain a, a normal level of consciousness. Right. So determining um, the patient's baseline mental status 
um, is really uh, very important and critical to good health care and uh, medical evaluation. Um, this is really the, um, one of the pieces to the puzzle that can unlock a lot of the diagnosis because it allows you to uh, tell how a person is changed from their usual state. And I think in uh, common practice, the best way to find out um, a person's baseline is to talk to those around them. So bystanders, uh, neighbors, family members. This is a place where often um, emergency medical providers um, have a lot of advantages because they're in a home or a usual environment for uh, the patient so that they can talk to people who know them on a day-to-day -day basis and give a sense of what their usual function is like, um, what their usual thought processes are like. Um, and that little bit of information can really help guide how a person's changed uh, in the setting of illness uh, and uh, help medical providers unlock um, some of the uh, clues in diagnostic evaluation. Recall that altered mental status is never normal in older adults, and delirium is a state of confusion which develops acutely and is accompanied by waxing and waning levels of consciousness. Dementia is a loss of intellectual abilities, such as memory, that develops over time and is not associated with an altered level of consciousness. There's many obstacles in evaluating the mental status of older adults. Um, some of them, like uh, a language barrier, could happen with anybody, but can become exacerbated with an older adult. And so if you have an interpreter, at least know that they have a language barrier, that might be beneficial. Um, other ones might be if the patient's hard of hearing. A lot of these patients are hard of hearing, and sometimes they have their hearing uh, aids in, sometimes they don't. Um, maybe consider that. Uh, also, if they're hard of hearing, you can consider using a pen and a piece of paper. And just a simple thing is being at their level and talking to them loudly and in a way that they can see your face so they can read your lips. Um, something else is a lot of older people lose their higher end frequency um, hearing first. So uh, try not to talk in a real high pitched squeaky voice because they might hear you better the lower your voice is. The other two things I'm thinking of in terms of obstacles for evaluating the mental status of an older adult are um, dementia because it's very difficult to determine what's their baseline status. Is this caused by their baseline dementia or is it some, something that's of a new onset? And the other thing um, that has to do with previous history is traumatic brain injury or stroke that's caused aphasia and other things that are making uh, the assessment of their mental status difficult. Well, I think obviously you want to try and determine the uh, person's orientation of person, place, and time, but oftentimes that's fairly difficult for an elderly person in a nursing home because they're pretty detached from the real world a lot of times. So I try to ask them questions that might be a little more relevant to their lives, such as things about what their last meal was or some of the activities that they do at the nursing home or some of the things throughout that are in their room. You can use clues from them to see what they might know the answer to because maybe they don't know what day it is or what the date is not because they have an altered mental status but because it's just not relevant to their lives. Some other resources that can be used when assessing a patient with altered mental status include the obvious ones such as consulting their chart or talking to their caregivers such as their nurses or even talking to some people who you might not normally think about talking to like the um, dining staff or the cleaning staff or other patients because they don't all have altered mental status all the time. Um, but I think um, some more esoteric things to think about are maybe looking around to see do they have crossword puzzles on their table or do they have a coloring book? Or do they have Sudoku games or a blankie and a teddy bear? And those things might be significant in determining what their baseline mental status is. Um, so using context clues and things that are around their room is important. To determine baseline mental status, be sure to ask the family, friends, and others that know the patient. Ask a patient's caregiver or consult the chart if the patient lives in a facility and look for context clues as to their level of functioning, such as crossword puzzles, newspapers, books, etc. After finishing this episode, you should be able to identify common causes of altered mental status in the older adult, learn the importance of determining a patient's baseline mental status, and learn interview strategies to assist in evaluating altered mental status.